So with your compass um, or protractor, um, ugh, I get, always get confused. If we had to measure the normal F shape that we can see over there, meaning these two dots should be the same, I hope you can see it, but over there it tells me it's 90 degrees. So that means another fancy word for 90 degrees is perpendicular. And up here, let's check, again it's at 90 degrees, so those two are equal. Let's move this crossing line around. So I'm just going to take off these bands, turn this over, and let's check on this side what happens. So here's two parallel lines. Let's make them different. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's put it on the seventh one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Meaning that, ooh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Meaning that these two lines are equidistant, they're parallel from one another, and let's make a really strange shape. Now, typically you would find a Z in this shape because it looks like a Z, but can you see the F? The F travels there, a short little line down with that longer line. So that means that this angle over there and this angle over here in that F shape should be the same. So let's take our measuring tool. Oh, it doesn't quite fit there. So I'm seeing that if my compass opens up that way, it's 130 degrees, and I'm going to check it down here. And I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it comes out to 130 degrees as well. So in the F, they're the same. Let's make it look a bit more like an F. Let's bring this one down two pegs, this one down two pegs, and let's do a line that goes like that. So again, there's our F shape, but let's do the F shape that's upside down. So let's do the F shape that travels like this. So that means that this angle and that angle should technically be the same. We take our measuring tool, we can see that it opens to 110 over there. And if I take my measuring tool over there, again, from there to the middle point, there's 110. So, Physically, you can see that the corresponding reason when we see an F is actually true. When you play around with it, the fact that corresponding angles, when we see an F shape, the two angles that lie below the parallel lines are indeed equal. So let's look at our U shape from fun angles. We've got the line AB is parallel to a, the line CD, and then the line BD crosses over both of them. In our statement, we would say that angle ABD, referring to that angle, plus angle CDB, referring to that angle, add up to 180 degrees. Remember our fancy word for 180 degrees are supplementary. So the two angles inside of two parallel lines are supplementary. And the acceptable reason you can use is coent angles. You cannot forget to state which two lines are parallel, otherwise you won't get that right. So again, back to our board. Here's our board, and I've made two parallel lines, one, two, three, four space, one, two, three, four space. So these two lines are equally spaced, and I'm going to put in an elastic band. So typically, we were just looking at one like that, and that's very easy to see the U. There's a U facing to the right, and there's a U facing to the left. Let's pick up our measuring instruments and check out because it says that this angle along with this angle must equal 180 degrees. So I measure this angle and what do I know? It's 90 degrees. Not always 90, but just simply can you see it looks like it is indeed perpendicular? And when I measure that, that these two angles also come out at 90 degrees. Now, this is a coincidence that they're the same. When we do alternating angles and corresponding angles, the angles are always the same. When I do co-interior angles, the two angles always add up to 180. They don't have to be the same. And 90 plus 90, that indeed gives you 90 and 90, definitely give you 180 degrees. So let's change this up. Let's move the band around. Um, 
Let's make it look like that. No? Why is this not right? Because it doesn't cross the parallel line. It has to cross the parallel line. So there it's going to cross the parallel line. And let's see what we get. If we pull out our measuring instrument over there, it's a bit difficult with this um, thing in the way. I have 50. Sorry, that's an obtuse angle. I was reading the wrong one. If I open it up, I have 130. And if I um, move this over here, I have 50. So that angle there was 130. And that angle there was 50. And what do you know? When I add those two angles together, what do I get? 180 degrees. Let's try one more and let's move these bands around to make them look like this. Let's count one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to put it on the fifth one. And over here, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to put it on the fifth one. Equally spaced. Let's put a line going through there. Again, it's very easy to see the U, but we uh, to see the Z, but we are referring to the U shape. So let's see. Let's look at the interior angles on this side of the U. If I had to put my measuring instrument down there, I get oh sorry. If I have to put my measuring instrument down there and I have to open it up, I get a hundred and let's just make sure it's straight. I get about 110 degrees. And on this side over here, put my measuring instrument down. What do you know? I get 70 degrees. And what does the 110 along with the 70 make? Hey presto, 180. So that's the U shape in our fun angles. So looking at our Z or our N shape, typically we often see the Z easier. Here I've got line AB is parallel to line CD with the line EF passing through it. Can you see the red F like that? Showing you that these two hearts would be equal. So I would have angle BEF, referring to BEF, is the same as angle CFE, referring to CFE. You can also see the sorry red you can also see the blue angle which would make these two angles equal and that means i have angle aef referring here aef along with angle dfe dfe being equal an acceptable reason for alternating angles is alt angles again please don't forget which lines you're mentioning to be parallel so here we have our z shape one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. These two lines are parallel. They have the same distance apart. And this is typically what it should look like. Well, this is the typical one that we see, not what it should look like. And we can see our normal shape Z, which must mean that these two alternating angles should be equal. So if we pick up our measuring tool and we measure at that point there, I end up with 50 degrees. And I pick up my measuring tool and I measure at that point there, I end up with 50 degrees as well. So yes, indeed. Indeed, these two are the same. Sorry, 50 and 50. Okay. And then I'm going to measure on this side, and on this side I measure 100 and oopsie, 130 degrees, as you can see there. And on this side I want to measure 130 degrees as well. So I've got 130 degrees and 130 degrees on the other side, and that alternating angles are the same. What do you notice about these two? Um, angles that are adjacent. Fancy word adjacent, next to each other. What do we notice? They add up to 180 degrees. They are supplementary. What rule is this if I had to check those two angles add up to 180 degrees? I hope you remember. This is equal to, sorry, this rule is angles on a straight line. Let's just quickly check at the top here. There's something else I'd like to show you. At the top here, if I had to physically go and measure at the top, that angle there, I get 130 degrees. So there's 130 degrees. Is this a coincidence that this angle and this angle are equal? No, it's not. I hope you remember that they are vertically opposite angles and vertically opposite angles are equal. Remember angles on a straight line are also referred to adjacent angles on a straight line. Adjacent is the fancy word for next to. So not forgetting those two things. Two more things I want to show you and it will be the end of the video. We just want to talk about interior and exterior video um, 
triangles. So we're looking at interior angles of a triangle. So in triangle ABC, the three interior angles, the inside angles, are supplementary, meaning they should add up to 180 degrees, or they will add up to 180 degrees. So your statement would look like this. Angle ABC, so ABC, referring to that angle there, plus angle BAC, BAC, referring to that angle over there, and angle ACB, ACB, referring to that angle over there, add up to 180 degrees, they're supplementary. And your acceptable reason is interior angles of a triangle. So here we have our triangle, three points, let's measure. We measure there and we end up with 60 degrees. I don't know if you can see on the camera. We measure on this side and we also end up with 60 degrees. And lastly, we measure at the top and there we measure 60 degrees as well. So 60 plus 60 plus 60 or 60 times three is indeed 180 interior angles of a triangle. What type of triangle is this? This is an equilateral triangle. All the interior angles are the same and all the lines are the same distance. Equilateral triangles always have 60 degrees. Everything is equal in an equilateral triangle. Here's another triangle that I've created. So I'm going to measure this bottom corner over there. And with that bottom corner, I hope you can see it comes to 70 degrees. On this bottom corner over there, I hope you can see it also comes to 70 degrees. And then lastly, at the top, if we measure this corner here, it comes to 40 degrees. So 70 and 70 is 140, plus 40 is 180. So when we have a triangle that have two angles that are the same, what do we call this triangle? It's an isosceles triangle. The two bottom angles are the same. The two sides that lead to the same vertex are equal length. This is an isosceles triangle. Please remember, you cannot write isosceles triangle as a reason. Remember, it is the angles that are opposite equal sides. The angles that are opposite the equal length sides. That makes a tri an isosceles triangle. Opposite angles from equal length sides. And then lastly, I have this triangle. If I had to measure this triangle, over there this comes to oh it's a bit off but it comes to just under just under 60 so probably about 58 um, this tr this line comes to if I have to put it in the center just over 70 and then that line over there comes to just over 160 uh, sorry 60 so if I had to um, if I had to Measure it. I said this is just below. Oh, it's just difficult to read. But yes, all three different sides, if you had to add the angles together, it comes to 180 degrees. What do I call this triangle when the different ang when the angles are different? This is a scalene triangle. And a scalene triangle not only has different angles, but every length is every side of the triangle is a different length. This kind of actually almost looks very close to an isosceles triangle. Maybe I should have. Put it down there. That looks more like a scalene triangle. But again, if you had to go and measure, it would end up at 180 degrees. Last little chat, we're doing exterior angles of a triangle. So I've got triangle ABC, and what happens in triangle ABC is when I take angle BAC, BAC, meaning that angle there, and I take angle ABC, ABC, meaning that angle there, it equals the exterior, exterior meaning the outside angle of the triangle. So when I add those two together, I get the exterior angle, and your accepted reason is exterior angles of a triangle. Please remember when we're dealing with exterior angles, it has to be a straight line extending off of a triangle. So other exterior angles could look like this. Here's my triangle. Okay. There's an exterior angle over there because it's okay, it's a skew line, but it's meant to be a straight line extending off. If I had to draw a line, a straight line, Extending off there, there's another exterior angle. If I had to draw a straight line extending off there, exterior angle. If I had to draw a straight line exterior extending off there, there's a straight, there would be an exterior angle. This whole angle here would be equal to that angle and that angle. They have to be straight lines extending off of the triangle. So it does not look like this. 
Here's my triangle, and I draw a line like that. This is not an exterior angle. That's not an exterior angle. It has to be 180 degrees that extends off of a triangle. So that's wrong, and those two are incorrect. Very quickly, if we look at our board, I hope I can do this one. It may be a bit difficult. Here's a straight line. It's a circle. Again, ignore the circle. And then here I have my triangle over there, for example. Can you see? Straight line extending off of a triangle. Exterior angle says that these two angles on the inside, so that one comes to about 55. It's a bit difficult to read. About 55. And that one comes to about 55 as well. 55 and 55 is 110. When I place it there, it is just about at 110. So these two, the opposite angles, equal this one on the outside. Please note, I do not use the adjacent angle for this. These two angles are adjacent. I do not use this. It's the opposite interior angles, and it's called exterior angles. Let's look at another one, how it could look. Perhaps if I had to make a triangle like that, oh. and I had to extend the line off of it. You see how my elastic band actually has to go over this line and extend. Here's our exterior angle. I hope you can see it. That means that those two angles, when I add them together, would come to that. Let's try and see how much this comes to. About 40 degrees. This also comes to 40. What kind of a triangle is this here? It's an isosceles triangle. These two sides are equal in length. 40 and 40 is 80. Let's measure. What do we get? Over here, maybe I've measured wrong because that comes out 17. Oh, I did measure wrong. That's 35. And that's also 35. And 35 and 35 is indeed 70. So, looks like that. Let's see what else we can do with something like this. Um, even if I had to kind of extend it out here over my board, a little bit skew. So, I'm going to move that there. Hope you can see it. Here we go. Here's a triangle with a straight line extended off, meaning that that obtuse angle on the inside should be equal to the two opposite interior angles. Let's have one more look at this. If I had to measure that straight angle, it comes out to just under 160, which would equal these two angles on the inside. That comes to 130. And that one comes to 30 degrees. And 130 plus 30 gives me 160, which is what we measured on the outside. So I hope that's a good refresher for you for geometry that you did learn in grade 9. I'm going to put up an exercise that you can please complete for tomorrow. Tomorrow is Thursday, the 4th of February. And I will do a video on the answers. Um, thereafter, we're going to look at um, properties of parallelograms, also in book 2. Uh, and then we will probably look at straight lines and you will be writing a test, an online informal test, and you will be asked to please submit, um, regardless of whether or not it counts for marks, before we meet you in person. Have a good day, grade 10. Speak to you soon.